The Boston bombings and the Fort Hood shootings could have been prevented, at least according to our next guest, Robert Spencer, author of the new book, Arab Winter Comes to America, The Truth About the War We're In. This book highlights key faults in the current administration's policies enabling terrorists to slip through the net, including the decision to appease rather than confront Islamic extremists in the U.S. and the redundant immigration laws which let terrorists slip into the country unnoticed. Spencer also brings to light stories buried by the media and the Justice Department, like the Islamic terror plot to blow up the airport in Wichita and how a secret document seized from the mother, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood in the U.S., a group the Obama administration has zealously befriended, reveals the organization's radical Islamic goals, including the imposition of Sharia law in the United States of America. We are standing by in an effort to, uh, to get uh, our guest, uh, Robert Spencer, but as uh, and no sooner do we say we're standing by, we're happy to note that Robert Spencer joins us now via Skype. Robert, welcome to America's Forum. Thank you. Happy to be here. We really do appreciate it. And let's talk about uh, what was hailed around the world as the Arab Spring. You say it's giving way to an Arab winter in the United States. What happened and why, Robert Spencer? Well, the Arab Spring was a uh, was widely hailed as being this wonderful flowering of uh, democracy and pluralism, and it was really anything but. It was actually from the beginning, it was an Islamic supremacist takeover, and uh, the uh, Muslim Brotherhood took over in Egypt. The uh, uh, the uh, same allied groups took over in Tunisia and Libya and so on. And um, what happened was it very quickly became clear that the Arab Spring was not at all a, uh, a uh, democ uh, democratic movement. And the thing was is that the uh, Obama administration was completely tied into fantasy about this. Their uh, views of this were completely out to lunch. They were, uh, in other words, uh, saying that these things were this wonderful uh, uh, flowering of democracy when the reality was just the opposite. Now, the point is that the uh, same approach to domestic terrorism, to jihad threats in the United States, is informed in just the same way by fantasy instead of by reality. And this has been to our great detriment and caused great damage, uh, making us much more vulnerable to jihad attacks than we would have been had the Obama administration been more realistic about the nature and magnitude of the threat. So, Mr. Spencer, to expand a little bit upon that, you say that things like the Fort Hood shooting in 09 and the Boston Marathon bombing, you say things like this could have been prevented? Yes, no doubt about that. Absolutely. The uh, Boston bombing certainly could have been prevented. Uh, I'm hearing myself in the... Can I hang up the phone? I'm hearing myself in the phone, and it's very hard to... Uh, if, okay. you've, if you've transitioned to Skype, uh, we hope yes, we'll yeah, still have yeah. you there, Robert. Yes. We thank you for being... Uh, being able to handle that. So, yes, yeah. and there we see you on Skype. So, yes. please continue, I apologize sir. for the distraction. I was trying to uh, get set up there. But uh, in any case, we're all set now. You can hear me, right? Yes, yes, indeed. Go right ahead, sir. Okay, excellent. Now, Boston, the Russian government told us that the that Tamerlan Tsarnaev was a member of a jihadi group mm -hmm. who was... Uh, oh, actually, I'm sorry. The I'm still distracted by all the rush. I apologize. Starting over, Tamerlan Tsarnaev, the Russians told the FBI that he was a strong believer in radical Islam and that he had tried to join an underground group in Dagestan. The only underground groups in Dagestan are jihad terror groups. So the FBI was essentially told by the Russians that this man was a jihad terrorist. They did not, however, keep him under surveillance or think that it, it was necessary to do so. There are two possible reasons for that. One was that they got so many jihad terrorists in the United States to track that they simply didn't have the resources. But the other option, and I think it's much more likely, is that the problem was that political correctness had prevailed over the FBI to such an extent at that point that the, the FBI was unable or unwilling to do anything about Tsarnaev. Right around the time the Russians told us that he was a jihadi, the uh, 
Obama administration was scrubbing counter-terror ma training materials of all mention of Islam and Jihad in connection with terrorism. And FBI trainers, including me, who talk about the uh, jihad threat, who told agents about Islam and jihad so that they would understand the enemy. And obviously you cannot defeat an enemy that you can't understand. We were all dismissed at that time. So, so a, a censorship in terms of language, the words uh, Islamist, the words jihad uh, eliminated from public discourse uh, by this current administration. Uh, in, in another sense, Robert, we're seeing that on the ongoing debate about illegal immigration. A number of open borders enthusiasts on both sides of the aisle simply call this a matter of, quote, immigration. As you take a look at what has transpired and our failure to secure our borders, how, how big a risk are we uh, under for another 9-11 or continued terror attacks from our failure to control our immigration situation and our borders? I think that it's very likely that uh, somebody who comes in illegally could be involved in another 9-11 attack. Uh, the problem with the border is uh, very large. You know that the other than Mexicans, the OTM category is largely taken up by uh, I Islamic jihadis from Iraq, from Afghanistan and elsewhere, sneaking in into Texas and Arizona and California, disguised as Mexicans or in groups of Mexicans. Uh, so that there is this entire category that immigration officials use to classify them. And you got to wonder, you know, why is somebody from Afghanistan sneaking in via the Mexican border? We already know that Hezbollah is there and in Mexico training drug dealers and that some of those drug dealers have actually gone to Syria to wage jihad there. And they're learning. We, we've seen all these beheadings and grisly uh, behavior on the part of these drug dealers in Mexico who are being trained by these jihadis they're also bringing them in, bringing them into the United States. Well, and Mr. So Spencer, that's, you know, that's very right. chilling right there. But real quickly, before we say goodbye, just time for one more question, I think. But I wanted to ask you and get your reaction to the announcement coming out of New York City with the police department winding down uh, that surveillance program. Do you think they'll eventually uh, regret that decision? This is a key aspect of the book. I think they certainly will uh, regret it. I show in the book that the Muslim groups with ties to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood were gunning for this program for years, and they gun for every program and everyone who speaks out about jihad terror in any honest way. And until, unless and until this is turned around, we are all more vulnerable, and it's much very likely that there will be another attack in the near future. So what do you think we can do to protect ourselves? One of the main things we have to do is start speaking realistically about this and stop allowing the administration and the mainstream media to demonize and vilify everyone who speaks honestly about the threat and to uh, stop putting up with this fantasy-based analysis that allowed the Boston bombing to happen because the FBI either could not or would not deal realistically with the intel they got from the Russians, that allowed the Fort Hood jihad massacre to happen because his superiors, the shooter superiors, kept promoting him because they were afraid of being charged with Islamophobia if they didn't. It's time that, the, that, that America, the American people stand up and say, we're not falling for this Islamophobia nonsense anymore. We want honesty and truth from the media and from our elected officials, or we will throw out these elected officials and put in ones who will give us that. And, you know, you've been speaking out quite loudly and quite vocally. Is anyone listening? Well, you know, it's the same thing. Anyone and everyone without exception, who speaks honestly about jihad terror, is subject to a defamation and smear campaign by groups like the Hamas-linked Council on American Islamic Relations and others. And so a lot of people are just afraid to even deal with the subject. And so they won't feature people like me and others who speak in the same way. They won't talk about the issue. And so essentially the Islamic jihadis and their enablers have already won. But I, I'm thankful for people like you who will do have the courage to talk about this issue. And, and face Robert it. Spencer, we'll have to leave it there. We will uh, look forward to our next discussion with you. We thank you for telling us about your book, Arab Winter Comes to America, and we look forward to our next discussion. So how real is the terror threat post 9-11? And how does the border figure into this? We'd love to have your input on this. Why don't you tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. There's also email and Facebook. We're coming back.